Hey, what's up, Internet? I'm Short of the Max Extreme. And I'm Ghost Hunter Dave. And this is Imperious Rex. <laughs> Today we'll be discussing Captain America Civil War, highly anticipated new Marvel feature. Oh, yeah. Also going over some viewer questions and comments. And we might even have a special guest, kind of, on the show. Never Who know. knows? Might be a secret. We might just let everyone know right now. <laughs> or maybe we'll keep it a secret. Only we know. That's right. And soon will you. <laughs> well, let's get on with the show. Okay. Marvel's Civil War. Technically, it's Captain America's Civil War, but I see where your head's at. I kind of want to talk about a little bit of both. Okay. Um, it's highly anticipated. It's too bad that um, like it came out so early for like reviewers and such. Yes. Because now we have to like not go on the internet for a long time, mm -hmm. or have gone not and, be on the internet. For and a we're long. coming to you from the past right now too. <laughs> this, I mean, yeah. this could air at any date. Maybe mm -hmm. closer to its release. Maybe the week of its release. <laughs> Maybe two weeks after its release. <laughs> Who Doesn't knows? Matter. We're not always timely. <laughs> what is going on out there? So much action going on outside. <laughs> it really is. It's oh. Thunderdome outside. I was going to say that next. But Civil War. I thought we were done talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's all I've got. Oh, great. Um, no, I've got much more. Uh, Civil War was a book that came out, what, 2005? God damn it. Can you hear that outside? It's craziness. Oh. I hope the fire whistle goes off again. I really <laughs> hope it only. does. <laughs> um, I think it came out in 20, 2005. Who's to say? Doesn't matter. Roughly 2005. And it's a story um, kind of unlike any other at the time where the heroes aren't just facing off against a villain, they're facing off against an idea. And it was written by Mark Miller and drawn by Steve McNiven. Yep. Um, power couple. They also did Old Man Logan. Yeah. Whew. Another great read. Oh, man. And this is Mark Miller at the height of his Marvel popularity, too. Yeah. So, like, you couldn't pick a better writer to yeah. tackle a big summer event book. But Civil War was, like, the huge event that got a lot of people reading comics again. Mm -hmm. um, Marvel Comics was kind of not really in a slump really before then. They were kind of on the up and up. But, like, this is when they were like, boom, here we are again. And this was a big all-star event that encompassed the entire uh, Marvel Universe. And another kind of cool thing, right... A little bit before this, but definitely cemented in Civil War, was the factioning of the Avengers, where mm -hmm. after this, you did not see Captain America, Iron Man, and Thor, like Marvel's big three, right. in a book together for like two or three years. It well, wasn't until yeah. Secret Invasion, I think, that they finally all teamed up and shared a page together. Yeah. A lot it, of them at odds with each other up until then. Yeah. And even before this book, Thor wasn't even around since Disassembled because he just, in Ragnarok, happened to Disassembled. Oh, yeah. And then... He was a, taking care of Thor business. Yeah. He was doing that <laughs> stuff for, like, a while. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, a Thor does show up in this. Clone Thor, which the internet referred to as Clore. Clore. The worst name ever. Yeah. But ended up being a robot clone of Thor. Think that'll make it in the movie? Probably not. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> but he does blast a hole through Goliath. Yes. Which is pretty cool. Yep. Poor Goliath. <laughs> <laughs> he had a good run, I guess. <laughs> Better than you'd expect. I guess. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the book itself was very... It shook up the comic book industry there. Mm -hmm. Everyone bought it. Everyone talked about it. Mm -hmm. I think in hindsight, people look back at it kind of unfavorably. Like it was a lot of shock and awe without... A whole lot to it, but from I mean, from what I remember, I enjoyed it a lot. I think it's I the need one to read it again. It's the one event that actually stayed around for a little bit because mm -hmm. it had ramifications that actually split up the Marvel universe <laughs> for I'm going to say at least three years. Oh, because yeah. after that, um, the the Avengers title split into two Avengers titles, where it was New Avengers, yeah, New and Avengers Mighty. and Mighty Avengers, yeah. And it went on from there, and I don't think they got even back together up until Siege, or maybe, no, Secret Invasion, they all got together again. And then Siege was the next And then one. Siege was, like, kind of the end point where they went on another direction. Mm -hmm. But that's a story for another time. That's a story of when Dave took a long break <laughs> from comics. <laughs> <laughs> well, is any of this going to factor into the movie? Probably not. Maybe not. But for what they have set up right now, it looks like it's going to be a great movie. Yeah. Um, 
I mean, we're giving them the benefit of the doubt because they've yet to steer us right. wrong. And with the team behind Winter Soldier doing mm-hmm. this one, mm-hmm. which I think is arguably Marvel's best movie to date. Yep. Um, I mean, it's got all the pieces in place to be a really good film. It, a lot of people are saying it's what Avengers 2 should have been. Mm. And they're even saying, like, this is kind of more Avengers 3 than Captain America 3, Ooh. which could be. I don't know exactly who's saying it. I don't know. I'll, Track them down. I'll get back to you with names <laughs> and addresses. I'm mean, trying to stay off the internet. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to know any of that stuff. Um, but no, it looks good. I, like, they've got a whole universe established. Make use of it. Like, mm-hmm. if you're doing a Captain America movie, throw in the supporting cast that are signed on and ready yeah. to make Marvel movies. Yeah. Why not? Um, some notable appearances. We're going to have Spider-Man in it, which is going to be great. He looks awesome. I keep forgetting that. Yeah. I keep forgetting that he's in it. And then being like, oh yeah, that'll be something <laughs> that'll be something um some notable uh exits from the movie hulk is not going to be in it and thor's not going to be in it no nope. but here they're going to have like a weird not a weird but in thor 3 they're going to have like a sweet actiony strong guy romp in it so here's a off trap a little bit off mm-hmm. traffic or topic or track <laughs> however you want to merge these things. together um, do you think that Thor Ragnarok might be kind of a placeholder or their version of Planet Hulk? Getting Hulk off-world and letting him kind of go savage in a, you know, some weird arena? I think it'll touch on it, but it's not going to be as Planet Hulky as I probably want it to be. Mm-hmm. But uh, Planet Hulk is great if you haven't read it. Like, there's an animated feature that'll give you a little taste of it and it's fine, but the book is way, way better. Yeah, uh, it seems like Marvel's been very adamant about saying they're not doing Planet Hulk, yeah. so I just feel like maybe this is as close as we'll get to it, the yeah. fact that they're doing this. Yeah. And, like, I mean, it's tough to do a full-on Hulk movie without like any real actors in it, so mm-hmm. having Thor be in there and still doing kind of a crazy Hulk scenario, Yeah, like, I'm fine with that. Well, uh, Thor is another one where they... Like, that movie could use some more characters. Oh, sure. Just like Captain America, Thor isn't really the most interesting of the Marvel heroes. So, like, yeah, pad it out. Throw some more people that we like in it. Yeah. Just more... You've got a... Again, you've got a universe. Make use yeah. of it. Like, yeah. Yeah. So, the book Civil War, it's mm-hmm. a good read. Yeah. Definitely. You can jump right into it. It's kind of a standalone story. Yeah. Kicks right off with a big event. Yeah. Where all the superheroes realize, like, they need to be held accountable for their actions. Yeah. And very much like the setup of the movie. It looks like there's massive casualties, yep. and they decide we need to put something in place to keep people from just being vigilantes out yeah. there. And from what the movie, I think, looks like it's doing, I think, even better than the book, is actually splitting it up where you can actually pick a side, even though it is Captain America's movie. Mm-hmm. In the book, it almost made Tony Stark out to be the bad guy. Yeah, yeah. Even though you can kind of see where he's coming from, he does some evil shit in it. In the comics, it's a bus full of school children that get obliterated. Yeah. That wouldn't really go over Probably cinematically. Not. So, Probably like, not. it looks like this is uh, some kind of, like, suicide bombing on, like, a United Nations summit or something. And yeah. Bucky is targeted as the one responsible. Yeah. Which is a really good way to tie it into uh, the previous Captain America movies. Yep. And give it, like, a jump start to having an established character be at the crux of the conflict. Yep. So I'm all for that. Like, yeah, it was more of Miller's shock and awe. Yeah. Of, like, let's kill a bunch of kids. Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of shock and awe, excuse me, there are rumors that people uh, may <coughs> kick the bucket in this movie. Get their throat. <laughs> they will be <laughs> beheaded in the yes. movie. Yeah, yeah. Could happen. Um, do you want to take some bets, maybe? I think we should. I think we should do a bet, and I think we should invite the viewers at home to do the same. Yeah. If you haven't had the spoil already for you... <laughs> yeah. No looking online and finding out, because that we, would be cheating. Yeah. And we're going to take the honest route right and not do any of that. But um, I really think possibly uh, War Machine may may take it. It's yeah. teased in the trailer, and I want to say... Well, like it seems too, too out there. I know, but what I'm thinking is like, yeah, we'll tease it so people don't think we're going to do it, but then we actually do it, and they'll mm-hmm. be like, oh... My turn. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, I'm going with Captain America. Ooh. He's also one of my picks, actually. He was going to be my number one pick. Really, there's only a couple that it could be. <laughs> I mean, it, it could be Nick Fury again, or Coulson again, but mm. those don't last. And none of, none of these will really last, unless it's Quicksilver, some other character that no one cares about. Um, but, you know, this uh, Civil War led into the next kind of event book, which was Death of Captain America. Yeah. 
logically, the next step would be death of Captain America. Yeah. And there's really only slated to be three Captain America movies, and then they're going cosmic Infinity War, mm -hmm. where, you know, they could bring him back to life through an enchanted gem or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, like, they want to up the stakes. Maybe they do. I would Not say that'd be a power Captain play Captain America. Move. Um, that would... Really, that's my only logical choice of somebody who would die. Like, a, a good power player. Because I haven't really done that yet. They did Quicksilver and Coulson, but who cares? Nope. Like, <laughs> do it to Captain America. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, but, like, it seems like that would be a really good thing for Tony Stark to have to deal with. Yeah. From, you know, the next couple movies. Yeah. So, maybe this bet was kind of a waste of everyone's <laughs> time, because I really have no one out there than Captain America. <laughs> I know. There's going to be... I mean, I'm sure there's another one in there, like... Uh, I, I couldn't even think of anybody they've else. They've teased Hawkeye so much, it would just be cruel at this point yeah, if they killed him. I don't him. think they're going to do that. And everyone else seems, like, too new. Like, Vision, Scarlet Witch, Black Panther, Bucky. Yeah, I don't pick do any that. of those. Ant-Man. That would be depressing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kill Paul Rudd. <laughs> everyone loves Paul Rudd. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, so we're putting our bets on Cap, biting it? I would say, yeah. Okay. I'm, like, 75% sure he bites it in the end. Also out this week is a uh, new image comic uh, coming out today called Renato Jones, colon, The One Percent. Nice. Thanks. Nicely done. I looked at that camera, so... It... I just looked straight ahead. Ruined. We should do it again. <laughs> okay. Nah, we won't. Went <laughs> great. Uh, <laughs> this book is uh, created, written, drawn, uh, colored, everything, and owned in... Bright, bold, red font, <laughs> as the cover says. Uh, everything by creator Kari Andrews, mm -hmm. who, strangely enough, was nice enough to sit down with us, virtually, of course. Yes. <laughs> and by us, I mean me. By you. <laughs> um, for, like, a, a quick interview. We kind of crossed paths via Twitter. Mm -hmm. I asked him if he would be up for answering a couple questions, said I was a big fan. He's like, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And he's, like, the most chill, laid-back dude. Yeah. Like, he's he's made comics, he's directed a couple feature films, mm -hmm. and he's like, yeah, why not? So, we blew Skyped our, a bit. Yeah, and blew our collective minds. Yes. <laughs> it gave me a false sense that everyone out there would be like this, so I, now I'm, I'm getting a little upset when I ask people right. and they don't want to talk to me. I'm like, fuck's his problem. <laughs> uh, not everyone's as nice as Kari, apparently. Nope. My first encounter with your work was kind of when I was getting back into comics in uh, college, and I was reading a lot of different Marvel titles, liking a lot of what I was reading, and it wasn't until years later that I realized and learned that you were the artist on many of these, yet they looked completely different. So <laughs> very, very different style. It blew my mind when I found it was all coming from the same guy. Yeah, well, when I was uh, when I decided to break into comics, you know, I, I uh, I'm pretty focused and pretty goal driven and pretty aware, and I knew that the best way to do it was to create your own style and own that style, you know, like a car, like BMW. You, you kind of recognize a BMW car or a Mercedes car or a Ferrari or whatever that is, uh -huh. and then you trade up on that style and you build up your audience, and then you know that style is like you, your persona, and people look forward and recognize it, and it's what defines your whole career, but. I just could never do it. I just I always felt so limiting to draw only one way, especially when I do other things. I like I paint and I sculpt and I paint in different media and there's different ways to paint and different ways to sculpt and a thousand ways to draw. And I also like, you know, direct movies or whatever. I just mm -hmm. I, I always felt too limited with like trying to, you know, find one way to draw. And I and I did worry about it a lot when I was breaking in. But at a certain point I just decided that Maybe my style will just be to have no style, you know, <laughs> and just like kind of like just do, just follow my interests wherever that wherever that leads me, and not be limited by by a style. Every every kid, every child makes stories naturally when they're given toys. Mm -hmm. They story tell, and every kid draws. Every kid does all this stuff, and for whatever reason, people stop. You know, either they're shamed out of it or they're told not to or whatever. They just lose interest or whatever. But um, I'm lucky enough where I can have a career doing the same things that we all did as, as kids. <laughs> oh, yeah, Ronaldo Jones, right. So, so this is my first true creator and comic book. And okay. what it was, when, when it, before I broke in, I made a promise to myself to like um, draw superhero stuff because I love it and then draw creator own stuff and just bounce back and forth. And then when I started working in comics, that's when I decided to do the film thing instead. And that kind of took the place of the creator own stuff. So 
And instead of jumping back and forth between superhero comics and creative comic books, I ended up jumping back and forth between superhero comics and film projects, really. Mm-hmm. And I never really had time to do the creator own stuff until there came a point when it was just like, what am I, you know, I need to do this. Like it's been, I promised myself I'd be doing this a long time ago. So I just did it. I, and this is my first uh, time focusing on creator own books. And it's about a guy who uh, hides amongst the super rich to judge them for their super rich crimes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, yeah, it comes out in May, May 4th. It's, it's like fun. It's really a lot of fun to do. To just you know, for someone who likes to own all the processes, yeah, like for Renato Jones, I can just make my own ads. <laughs> like oh, I can, yeah, you know, yeah. I can do all I this saw crazy their, stuff. It's a very unique ad campaign too. If you you know search uh, Google it or anything like that, yeah. it's it's very eye catching. I, <laughs> I call the the luxury justice ad campaign, and those ads will be in the interiors of Renato Jones. So oh, cool. Wait, no no effort wasted. Well, awesome man. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. We'll definitely uh, do kind of a, a discussion and a recap on the book when it hits the stands. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I would, I would love to hear what you thought about it. It's like, what's weird is for me, it's just another comic book that I've written and drawn. Mm-hmm. Um, but the people I've shared it with, uh, most of them have had like kind of like a big reaction to it. Like they all like it, but it's like, uh-huh. uh, like I think maybe because it's not a superhero, even though I feel like I'm doing the same thing I always do. Mm-hmm. I think the, just the fact that he's not a, a classic superhero, and I put him in this narrative. I think um, uh, the reaction has been different. Yeah. <laughs> so it's interesting. It's very interesting to me, for me to see that, knowing I'm just coming at it from the same place that I did with Iron Fist or Spider Man or whatever. But oh, yeah. it's just the nature of the character is like the world is a little more violent and it's a little more satirical and humorous. So it's. I'm very curious to see what the reaction is from the general the general public. And that's got to be such a cool idea to be able to give someone something new that they haven't seen before. A creator, I mean, it's why you do a creator-owned project like this, but really, I mean, it's something that you own. It's never been on the market before. It is all you, whether they like it or hate it. Yeah, it's because yeah. of you. Like, there's no pre- preconceived yeah. notions. I put it right on the cover. I put... Uh, uh, writ- what I, I forget what I was written, written, drawn, or something created, written, drawn, and owned by in a, red. By, by a car. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I because saw it. it was awesome. For, for me, it's like it's like that's part of the fun of it, you know. <laughs> oh, like yeah. with Spider Man or Iron Fist, like I can take my turn and I can visit that character, but I'll never, I'll never like own him, you know. Right. It's a <laughs> yeah, but with Renato Jones, I, he, I can. You know, I can keep those chains around him for as long as I want. Oh, yeah, long. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> well, awesome, man. I, yeah. uh, I don't have anything else. So, I, again, right. I appreciate your time. And I'm definitely going to urge everybody to check it out, give it a shot. If not for anything other than this, the fact that you just agreed to chat with me for this. Like, that's cool right. guy. <laughs> that's if this awesome. interview is the kind of guy you gen- want to support. Generates two comic book sales. That's it, yeah. It. <laughs> At <laughs> least. <laughs> At least. All right. I, I feel bad uh, my buddy who I do the show with, he wasn't able to make it. So I was hoping maybe you could, uh, you know, just give a shout out to my, my co-host, Troy, or tell him to eat shit. Either one. Uh, I'm sure he'd be happy with either. <laughs> <laughs> Troy, here's a shout out to you to eat some poo. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I kind of tried to combine everything. He's, he's pretty, uh... <laughs> and I love it. I will not be eating the poop, though. <laughs> well... Maybe just a bite. <laughs> Maybe just a bite. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely, everybody out there, pick pick up the 1%. Renato Jones, the 1%. Yeah. Even if you're not a comic book reader, like, this guy was cool enough to just be like, eh, sure. Yeah. I'll talk with this, this asshole from Dubuque. Yeah. 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 yeah, with very little prompting. Yeah. Like, went out of his way. Couldn't figure out the Skype thing on my end for a minute. <laughs> he waited patiently. <laughs> awesome guy. Pick out the book just because of that. How many how many creators, yeah. directors out there would do that? Yeah. So give it a read. And then uh, next week we'll uh, we'll chat about it. It'll be on the shelves. We'll have a chance to read it, mm-hmm. uh, and we'll talk about it on the next show. Hope it's good. Hope it doesn't suck. <laughs> That's on you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be great. <laughs> All right. So Troy, did you do anything cool over the week? All right. <laughs> well, I asked you that because I did something that was cool for me. Great. Um, it wasn't last week. It was back in the time mm-hmm. that we filmed this, of course. Uh, I was able to catch one of my favorite um, people in entertainment, Kevin Smith. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. Actually, I was super jealous that you went to go see that. Well, I asked you if you wanted to go see it. And I couldn't. So I took uh, cub reporter Neil Potter <laughs> <laughs> along with me <laughs> and his beautiful wife, Sarah. Yep. And we went out to Iowa City where Kevin Smith was doing an evening with Kevin Smith show. Mm -hmm. And it was a blast. Yeah. Absolute blast. It's just like he is on the DVDs or in his podcast, if you listen to that. Heard he went for five hours? Five hours. It was a two-hour show. Paid mm -hmm. for a two-hour show. Cheap tickets. And we got five hours out of him. That's pretty great. And he was still going. He could have gone all night. Oh, like, my God. This guy's stamina. Amazing. What do you go on about? Everything. Oh, okay. He answered, like, five <laughs> questions. <laughs> in typical Kevin Smith fashion. Great. Uh, but he, he did a little bit of everything. He told some stories about Tusk, mm -hmm. which, if you haven't seen it, it's not the most critically well-received movie. <laughs> but the whole fact that, like, the story was created, like, as one of those things, that, like, wouldn't it be fucked up to see this? Yeah. I wish I could watch that. Someone should make that. And then, like, no one would ever make that. Yeah. I guess I have to make that. <laughs> that was kind of the mindset of going into how he made Tusk. Amazing. And he goes through the whole creative process on it, and it's super interesting. Like, just... Hearing the backstory behind how some of these things get made mm -hmm. gives you a, a whole new appreciation for the work and everything that goes into it. Wonderful. And he's just one of the most uplifting dudes. He's so inspiring. Oh, yeah. He's just a fountain of positive energy. Oh, I'm, I know. You know, he's just like, don't fucking, don't critique shit. Don't tear something down. It's easy to tear something down. Like, build something up. Yeah. And that, like, you walk out of his show just feeling energized. Like, you want to go out and create art. Yeah. So, like, the guy's awesome. Yeah. He should, I mean, he should, he does speak. He does this all the time. Now, I yeah. say, he should do this more often. He's probably like, Jesus, man. Like, I, <laughs> like I was in, so, I was how in, do 40 podcasts yeah, a week? Yeah, I was in Iowa, for Christ's sake. I think I, <laughs> obviously, I do this quite often yeah. if this is where I'm at now. Um, I would agree with you. Like, not all of his work is like a critical hit with like either it be comics or movies, mm -hmm. or whatever. But when he does like his talks and he's just like going on about like, yeah, just go create, just do something. And it's like, yeah, uh -huh. and, yeah, I should. And it just makes you feel great. Oh you know? yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's yeah. It gives you a whole another window into watching some of these movies. Mm -hmm. Great speaker. They do just talk nonstop for five hours. I was exhausted sitting down <laughs> listening to him. I can't imagine how he does this on a regular basis, yeah. but awesome dude. Yeah. Really, really nice guy. Yep. So, um, as we kind of wind down on this episode, it, let's uh, let's do something a little different. All right. We have been on the air. <sighs> Sound like a couple of fucks. <laughs> so we've been on the air. <laughs> yeah, we've been on the air for like 14, 15 episodes by yep. this point. So we've finally accumulated enough feedback yeah that we could maybe call out a couple of them yeah i would love to do that i would too um one of the first ones i want to shout out to ernesto i'm gonna butcher this last name he's brazilian i'm not we just keep it at ernesto someone that i, I sometimes let my youtube comments lapse because i don't expect any and yeah. then i looked and there's a, a lot of them from right. this guy so I feel like he's our first fan. I love it. That w I have no actual like physical meeting right. with. So <laughs> yeah, someone yeah, that yeah. somehow found us. Yeah. Which is amazing. Yep. So from that point on, we're doing the show for you, Ernesto. <laughs> <laughs> um, gave us many kind words. Yeah. And he was uh, requesting uh, potential episodes on some of his favorite titles, Fables, mm -hmm. Unwritten, and Sandman. Well, Ernesto, I want to tell you, I've read... Almost all of Fables already. I've uh, I've read through 13 trades. There's 22 total. It's um, not almost all of. It's more than half. It is. So there. Almost all of. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Once I get through all of them and I have like a concise view on the whole series, uh, we can do a Fables episode. And I... have to lead Dave through it. Yeah. <laughs> I've been buying Fables in hardcover. And yeah. they're like on 12 mm -hmm. of many. So I've been yeah. waiting for that, because yeah. yeah. I like to read my runs all at once. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'll jump in. If you buy them all, then I'll just borrow them from you. Okay. So, yeah, we will do one of those soon. Yeah. And we'll do all of them eventually. Yeah. But we'll try to keep you watching by providing <laughs> feedback on at least one of these. <laughs> yep. Um, and he was great. He also mentioned that he wanted to read Multiversity for a while, but mm -hmm. wasn't prepared as many people. We weren't even prepared. <laughs> no, no. So he, he actually said... Um, he found our videos were a huge help. Very good. Great to hear. Pretty good for our first outing that we spurred somebody onto something else. That's yeah. pretty good. All right. Sarah Potter, another friend of the show. Last name sounds familiar. 
Um, this was a comment on some of our earlier episodes. <laughs> Those chairs are deafening. <laughs> yes. Winky face. Awesome job, guys. Yeah. Chairs were deafening. They sure were. <laughs> as, uh, as you may notice, we're in a different... We have been in a different studio for yeah. quite some time. Yeah. The, uh, We're in our satellite location. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the primary studio is under repair at the moment. It is finishing up nicely as we speak. Mm -hmm. My contractor is putting <laughs> the labor in right now. <laughs> putting her back into yep. it. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I'm going to purchase some nice stools. Oh. I'm going to I'm gonna t sit test them, make sure there's right. no squeaks. Right. We're going to be great. Great. And that way we won't. I won't feel the need to like lean back or do anything <laughs> that looks terrible on camera. Raw. It's gonna force us to hunch over, stare the. I was, say, I was gonna say almost drop my phone, and then I drop my phone. Stare the viewer in the face and just stare him in the face. I guess. Give it right to him. All right. Here's another piece of mail from a, a gent named Tom Staver. I didn't have enough room, so I didn't write any of his stuff down. <laughs> Essentially, what he was doing was um, calling you out, in so many words. <laughs> Maybe calling us out. I would like to say commenting on our Batman v Superman review. He didn't call me out. He no. said he agreed with me. <laughs> so he called me out, saying that he didn't agree with me uh, on Batman v Superman. It's okay, Tom. Opinions are like assholes, and you can eat mine. So, there you go. <laughs> and he's dead now, so really, why dig up old wounds? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, new friend of the show, uh, Tiffy Diamond. Uh, mm -hmm. Twitter handle, Tiffy for you. T I F F Y number four U? Correct. Not Y O U. Letter, Letter U. U. Did it. Jinx. We, we could have just typed it up. I guess I could have just put it on screen. Saved us a lot of time. Yeah. <laughs> she uh, has recently done a couple kind of comic related videos. Yeah, check them out. Suicide Squad one. A Blade one, mm -hmm. which, if you know me, oh my god, I'm a big fan of Blade. <laughs> so, I jumped all over that. Yeah. Anytime I can talk about Blade. You talk about Blade? I take the time. <laughs> <laughs> I, mark, I <laughs> mark a spot on my calendar for it. Um, so, great person. Had a, couple, had a lot of comments for us, actually. How's the Wonder Woman costume feeling? Happy to know, happy you know, what it feels like to be a girl on Halloween now. That was one comment. Nailed it. Yep. Next one, she was going to use the term sexually frozen as a term now. You've coined a phrase. You've changed the internet landscape, Dave. I don't know how often this term will come up in casual conversation. And the two, they didn't go hand in hand. <laughs> it was... <laughs> Batman was sexually frozen. Um, so yeah. Thanks, Tiffy. Mm -hmm. Diamond. Tiffy hell, for you. Hell of a name. Um... And we all, we've had some feedback from Dinesh and crew at Valiant. Yep. Still stand-up guys. They're awesome. They're keeping at being just great. They're just so friendly. I know. Everybody that we've come in contact with via the internet mm -hmm. <laughs> with Valiant have just been the best guys ever. They're like the guys that would say, like, hello to you if you cross them on the street. Absolutely. <sighs> in New just, York, of all places. Yes. <laughs> and they're amazing. <laughs> Where normally they stab you when you cross the street. <laughs> Great opportunity to call out. We did a big uh, Valiant episode there where yep. we just ran through a ton of books, like eight or yep. nine. We tried to attribute them correctly, mm -hmm. but only so much time. Right. Um, so we usually just called out the writers and the artists. Mm -hmm. I realized there's plenty of people that contribute to the book that don't mm -hmm. always get the shout out. Right. Of which, they don't get the big accolades like the other. Exactly. Yeah. One of which is uh, Ryan Wynn, who mm -hmm. was kind enough to, to like us or friend yeah. us or whatever Twitter allows yeah. you to do. Yeah. And he's an inker on many Valiant books. Yeah. XO, I think. Um, Divinity. Divinity, yeah. Um, so I was like, oh, shit. I felt bad about it. I was like, shit. Like, there's all these people that we're yeah. not even acknowledging. Yeah. So we're going to try to be better about that. There's no way to retroactively do this because I just, I don't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but going forward, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be better about making sure that we call out. Maybe we'll put a, a full text of everyone involved in the mm -hmm. book or something. But, uh yeah, I mean, that work shouldn't go unnoticed. Right. Like, heck of a job. And, like, as Chasing Amy has taught us, <laughs> inkers are not just tracers. <laughs> right. And they'll trace a chalk outline around your dead fucking body. <laughs> you fuck. <laughs> uh, oh, man. Um, so, we love uh, viewer and comments, uh, feedback, all that kind of stuff. So, just keep it coming because... Some we'll would say we feed off of it. 
Like a vampire. <laughs> it gives us sustenance. It does. <laughs> but yeah, keep it coming, because we would love to have suggestions for the show and just think, uh, well, just want to know what you think in general. Yeah, it's a way to say things. Yeah, All that's right. a one way I said it, and that's how I did say it. And that's what you're getting. <laughs> <laughs> no edits. We've done, uh, we've reached our allotment of take twos. <laughs> you just want to wrap it up? Yeah, let's wrap it up. All right. Okay. So that was a comic free-for-all for all you viewers out there. Um, maybe we'll do some more. Maybe. Maybe we'll have another show. I hope so. <laughs> so join us next time where we maybe might have a show where we tell you everything you want to know but didn't know you wanted to know about comic books. Troy, what can viewers expect next week? I'll tell you. Great. Well, we're going to talk about Captain America Civil War because that'll be out. Yep. And you know what? We're going to want to talk about it. And we'll also catch up with uh, Renato Jones. Yep. See how that treated us. And maybe there'll be more mail, but we probably won't get to it next week. <laughs> yeah, let's just group a bunch of them together. That's a good way to do it. Knock yeah. them all out. Until next time, I'm Tor of the Max Extreme. And I'm Ghost Hunter Dave. So check us out next week. We'll see you later.